Well, Labor has proposed an innovation geared program to mentor entrepreneurial minded students to develop and commercialise business ideas. Joining me live now is the Shadow Minister for Industry and Innovation, Ed Husich. Ed, uh, good to see you. Thanks uh, for your time this morning. So you've got about 2,000 students Pete. here who you hope would be available. H how would mm. you decide who is eligible? Well, the big thing that we want to do, uh, Peter, is we want to send a signal to young Australians who have a massive stake in the future of the economy that we back, uh, we want to back them and their ideas to build new firms and new jobs. And we want to do that through the, the range of university accelerators that exist across the country. We want to work with the university sector and others in the innovation space to determine how we do that selection process. Uh, and the big thing for us is to build that momentum, build that interest in starting new firms because really uh, what we need to see in this country, apart from current firms getting bigger and stronger, we need to see an influx of new firms coming in with new ideas to improve the way the economy works. This is a, a reheated version of the same program pitched five years mm -hmm. ago. What's different? Yeah. Well, for where we put it uh, back in that point in time, there were two big issues in terms of our innovation sector back in 2015, Peter. Uh, the issues revolved around finding it hard to get skilled people, finding it hard to get money. Uh, now, on the skilled issue, that is a massive issue, not just in this sector, but everywhere, and the government has dropped the ball in terms of preparing people for that. And this issue, I find, in industry is a dominant um, concern for businesses. But on the second issue, getting money, so there are a number of reforms that had, both parties had supported through 15-16 uh, that we anticipated would have an impact. We'd hoped that they would, but we're actually seeing some levels of investment contract. The time is right now to get this policy, and the reason why we've brought this back is because we are seeing post-pandemic a lot of aversion to risk, harder to get money for these smaller type loans, and we do think if we're going to rebuild the economy, we need to fire up people's energy to be able to pursue their ideas and back it up with investment uh, that will create those future firms and jobs. What are your long-term measures, long-term measures to support start startups then? We've really got to uh, do a number of things. Um, firstly, we've got to make sure that we've got people that are talented and on the ground to do, do, this, to do the work that will support startups and encourage their growth. And this has been a continuing issue. And if you've had um, a federal government that continually cuts or fails to support the university sector, can't get its act together on commercialising the research and ideas coming out of universities, is cutting TAFE and is dragging the chain on innovation, uh, this is a real problem. And some of the stuff that they've put forward, they put forward a patent box idea that is from other countries. They've got a National Centre of AI excellence that they stole from us, a digital tax to level the tech playing field uh, that was announced similarly or, or was proposed at a similar time as when they were saying that they were looking at the patent box, gone nowhere, and we shouldn't even talk about the COVID Safe app that hasn't achieved much and didn't even use local tech talent to get it up off the ground. So we need a government that believes in the power of Australian ideas and is prepared to back it up to get through the blockages we're facing and to support it in terms of growth. Well, on the COVID Safe app, I mean, it feels like we haven't spoken about this for a long time, but, but there, to be fair, there aren't many cases around Australia for it to track, right? Mm, that's a good thing. Absolutely a good thing. But at its height, Peter, uh, you know, the COVID Safe app, we spent millions of dollars largely on advertising, mind you, and it got like a dozen or so contacts. And what we saw the states do is a much better job uh, because the COVID Safe app was such a dud by, by the Morrison government, they had to come up with their own tracing apps. And the thing is, we do need to have these type of supports in place because in time we might get vaccinated, who knows when, under this government. But uh, if there are outbreaks, we will need to turn to technology to be able to you know, speedily determine you know, mm. where there is an issue and how we fix it. I, I, Ed, just, just finally, a, a complicated issue, this one. It always is in the Middle East, but uh, I just want to see... Mm. Um, it, it, it relates to Israel and what's going on in Gaza. The Prime Minister yeah. referred to this yesterday, that there may well be some blowback in some communities um, in Australia. We, we've seen pictures of, of Israeli flags being burned as well. Are you seeing or, or hearing about anything, uh, any kind of friction in this space in your electorate? I think there is concern amongst people, uh, and people have raised from within my electorate and elsewhere, uh, the absence of any signal out of uh, government 
uh, as to what they think on this. I would rather the Prime Minister focus on the concern that exists in the Australian population about the violence that we're seeing over there. Uh, we want that violence to, e like, to basically stop. There have been some heartbreaking scenes, Peter, you know, the one in particular with the young bloke chasing the, the body of his dad that was mm. being carried away and some of the other reports we've heard uh, as well. Um, you know, we want... As much as we want Israeli families to be safe, we want Palestinian families to be safe as well. We need a longer-term solution to this, and if we have this type of violence, it will continually put a roadblock on longer-term peace, and the government should, and I'm glad Maurice Payne has spoken up, calling the foreign minister has spoken up, calling for uh, hostilities to cease. We need to say that, and we don't need mm. to see any more heartache coming out of that part of the world. Yep. OK. Ed Husey, appreciate your time. Good to chat. Talk to you soon. Good on you, Pete. Thank you.